and welcome to 10 Years, 10 Icons, our celebration of IFC's 10th anniversary. I'm Alison Bales. And I'm Chris Gore. IFC has been on the air since September 1st, 1994, bringing you into the trenches of independent film for more than a decade now. And today we'll be looking back at the top 10 icons of independent film from the past 10 years. These are the people that we think have had the most influence on audiences and the film community. And believe me, it wasn't easy to come up with this list, so if you disagree with our rankings, just email Allison directly. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Let's get started. The icon at number 10 on our list was just another struggling actress in Los Angeles until Tom Hanks came into her life. Now she's known as the creator of the most successful independent film of all time. Before 2002, Nia Vardalos was an unknown comedian living in Los Angeles. Fed up with bit parts on bad TV shows, the Second City alum wrote a one-woman play about her traditional Greek upbringing and her wild wedding to actor Ian Gomez. Actress Rita Wilson, who also happens to be of Greek heritage, saw the play and fell in love with it. And she convinced her husband, Tom Hanks, to produce it as a film. Vardalos wrote the script for My Big Fat Greek Wedding and insisted only she could play the lead, even though executives were pushing for a name actress. Her tenacity was rewarded with some big fat box office receipts. Made for just $5 million, the IFC film's release has grossed more than $350 million worldwide. Well, Chris, you can't argue with $350 million. I mean, obviously this film hit a nerve. Uh, critics didn't really like it. The audience loved it. Um, I think it goes to show that, you know, critics cannot always have their finger on the pulse of the nation. Well, critics aren't always right. I think uh, Adam Sandler proves that. But I, you know, I think you can argue with $350 million. Uh, I mean, you can't deny that success, but I, I don't think that box office is always the best barometer to use uh, uh, about the success of a film. Um, I'm not a fan of the movie. I mean, it's a chick flick, not for me. Um, I, I kind of think it's just a by the numbers romantic comedy, but its success is completely unexpected. I also think that it started off a sensibility for a different type of independent film, and maybe the people who were scared of independent films because they thought they were arty or foreign or violent or dark, um, would now embrace going to independent films because they see that they can be like any other type of film. Okay. The icon at number nine sold his cherished comic book collection to raise money for his first film and then bought the collection back after the film became a hit. I am the uh, IFC poster guy. <laughs> the IFC, which we affectionately call the Kevin Smith Network in my house. <laughs> in 1993, Kevin Smith cobbled together 28 grand to shoot Clerks after hours at the convenience store where he worked in Red Bank, New Jersey. One question I definitely get once a week is like, you know, how do I break in? How do I get into the business? Who do I sell my script to? And, and, and my advice is always like, look, man, I have no idea. I never did that. You know, I just went out and made a flick. And, and you know, it's, it's, it sounds pithy, but it's, it is kind of easy if you, you know, if you've got some credit cards. Clerks launched his career and his follow-up, Mallrats, nearly ended it. You know, it's very liberating to have a movie that fails on such a grand level. And, um, <laughs> very liberating and uh you reach this point where you know the reviews were were so horrendously bad and the people were critics were really particularly vicious and uh, you know it's just like once once they've said all that you're like where can you go but up but over the past decade smith has delivered a solid staple of comedic films as diverse as chasing amy dogma and jersey girl but they all share smith's smart ass humor and relentlessly clever dialogue um, the thing that carries through all of them is just a, a way too much dialogue from beginning to end, far too many words, not nearly enough action, um, and shoddy, shoddy craft, craftsmanship, you know, inept, inept directing. All facetiousness aside, we've gotten very lucky in terms of what we've been able to do in film and how we've been able to be cheeky or the shit we've been able to say. I've, I've been really, really lucky. I mean, like, I, I've always been able to make the exact movie I've wanted to make. Now, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. Um, really? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it is dialogue. You know, uh, you look at something like Clerks, and one thing I'll say about Clerks, um, it's probably one of the worst looking films ever to get a theatrical release. That's not why I love this film. It's the dialogue. We've never heard uh, characters talk like this in a film. They really talk like 
people I know. Well, I think that uh, I won't disagree with you on Clerks. I love that film too. And there have been several Kevin Smith films I have enjoyed. I do happen to think he's more of a boys director. If you can say Nia Dallas, <laughs> that's a chick flick, then I'm going to say Kevin Smith is more of a boys director. Um, I think Dogma was exceptional. I think Jersey Girl was less than exceptional. And um, I think what Kevin Smith does is he gives schlubby guys who um, are really nice guys. I've met him. I think he's a great guy. They, Anyone can make a film. He can do it. He does it. He uses his friends. He started, you know, Ben Affleck's career pretty much. I don't know if we should thank him for that. But uh, <laughs> well, I think I think Kevin makes uh, the male version of a chick flick. Kevin Smith makes great dick flicks, and he also got the best performance out of Ben Affleck ever. I mean, let's face it, Chasing Amy was great. Jersey Girl, another story. Right. Okay, well, our next icon struggled through some fairly forgettable work, including a stint on Beverly Hills 90210, until she landed the role that would alter her career and the landscape of independent film. This experience has changed my life. Director Kimberly Pierce spent three years looking for the actress who could play the gender-bending Brandon Tina in the IFC film's release, Boys Don't Cry. It was probably five weeks before shoot, and I just, I mean, all of us were like, we can't shoot if we don't have the girl. And we had a, a set of auditions in LA. And I went out and I got a hat, you know, a cowboy hat, and I stuck all my hair up in it, and I put my husband's clothes on, and I put cowboy boots on, and you know, Brandon really loved dressing, um, like, you know, kind of cowboyish, and went in like that. Isn't she beautiful? Mm -hmm. What trash? Come on. It's my friend. Yeah, well, you tend to look like that, Donnie. We're like, get out. Like we were totally shocked and we we're like, we look closer and then we looked up here and we're like, okay, she's got an Adam's apple. We're like, look at that jaw. And she was entirely charismatic and she got the character without any direction, which was amazing. Hilary Swank cut off her hair and actually lived as a boy for one month before filming began. I wanted to also be honest to the integrity of this person. So I just thought, you know, how did Tina Brandon, Brandon Tina walk out on the street and pass? And that's what I did. Her extreme commitment to the role paid off. And the Spirit Award goes to Hilary Swank for Boys Don't Cry. In 2000, she won the Independent Spirit Award and the Oscar for Best Actress. When I received the Academy Award and I was standing on stage, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, we've come a long way. I can only hope that people can see this film and see that this person is no different than they are and uh, that it can hopefully put an end to, to intolerance. I think that Hilary Swank has deserved those, uh, the Oscar, the Independent Spirit Award. I think that performance was amazing. I think the film was amazing. I think it's a tough film to watch. I think that the film made people more ready to embrace these kind of topics, even though they're hard because it was done so well. Well, I think it's an, it's an absolutely brilliant performance. Um, it's also one that I find difficult to watch mainly uh, because just seeing women being brutalized in that way uh, is just it's just hard so it's amazing what hillary put herself through uh to go to the places she did in that role yeah the role was really special and since then she hasn't done quite so well in her choice of roles but she's now working with clint eastwood in million dollar baby which comes out very soon and i think it will be very interesting to see how she does under his direction okay